Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the home stretch for both of the National Lacrosse League and Men's College Lacrosse, also Women's College Lacrosse as well. But I have decided, you know, um, although I think it's interesting, I don't think I'm going to be watching Women's Lacrosse going forward. Uh, it's not that it's bad or anything, it's just you know it, it's too different for me you know um, I think some of the teams in, in the college game are great remember there really isn't a pro league equivalent so that's also preventing me from you know keeping up with the women's game I'll just say that right off the bat I don't want to sound you know I don't want to sound terrible or anything but I mean that that's just my gripes with it um, again like athletes unlimited I don't think it's legitimate. Um, I don't. I don't like the idea of athletes unlimited. Again, I found out they also deal with NFTs. And again, I don't like NFTs. I think we've established this with the whole FCF thing. If you are new here, um, but again, there are some damn good players in the women's game, and I'll even talk about you know North Carolina here just for a second here. Um, you know, man, it. If it comes down to it, I think I'll free up my son. I think I'll free up that that championship Sunday. Free up that championship Sunday because I mean it's looking like North Carolina in, in, in the women's game at least. You know, Boston College is also there. Syracuse, even though Boston College lost to North Carolina in the Thriller, and North Carolina beat Syracuse as well. I mean, I, I don't think anybody's stopping North Carolina in the women's game at least, but. That's, again, that's just my spiel on things. Um, you know, I don't want to sound terrible or anything. I just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not watching the women's game. It's going to be similar to, you know, I, I hinted at it at the beginning of the month. Um, I'm not doing the WNBA either. Uh, I'll say that right now, but I'll save that for um, later on tonight. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you all about that later, you know, tonight. So. Um, let's go to the PLL first. We know now what the deal was with the whole, you know, broadcast television deal. We know what that is now. Again, there's players being signed for, like, multi-year deals and stuff like that, like Grant Ament with the Archers. But the big thing that came out of this past month is the deal with ABC, ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN+. Plus. All games will be streamed. This year for the PLL on ESPN Plus, it's a four-year deal worth eight figures. I don't know how many figures that is, and I don't know how many millions that is, but I'm I'm excited that there's going to be games on ABC. I'm hoping that the championship will be on ABC because uh, the championship's on a Sunday, so everything should be easy peasy, hunky dory. PLL championship should be on ABC. The PLL um, uh, quarterfinals. Should be like on ESPN Network. I'm thinking like ESPN News or something like that. Um, and then you know the semifinals. Yeah, those, those are those are going to be on ABC. I think, in my opinion, because those are uh, those dates. The, the semifinals and the championship are Sunday, so there, there's really nothing. There's really nothing there, you know, on Sundays on ABC in September. So you know, go ahead. And give us the PLL semifinals and championship on ABC. I could deal with the quarterfinals on like ESPN or something like that, ESPN two or whatever, you know, or wherever you know, even ESPN Plus if it happens to be that. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for the PLL season again. That won't start up until June, and you know, I'll be making more and more updates as we get to the PLL season because I'm excited for my water dogs this year. PLL draft is also coming up. There's a lot of draft odds and stuff like that. I believe the draft order came out as well. I'm not sure, but I I, I do know that there is a lot of guys coming out of the college game that are going to be really, really good. Um, in the National Cross League, let's get to that real quick. The league, you know, it, it, the playoff structure, it, it's... It's not ideal for me. I, 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 I'm not sure if I've been critical of this in the past, but I don't think there should be a best of three game for the finals. I'm just saying. I, I, like you got single games all season. You got single elimination all throughout the playoffs. Why would you want to do a best of three in the finals? Can we stop that? And 
it, it, it goes even further this time because the playoffs are... Uh, uh, it's it's stretched out very very long and i get it arena availability i get it you know nhl um, nba you know other sports you know as well and other events you know arenas need to be booked and stuff like that but i i would i would say try as best as possible to condense these playoffs because there's no way there is no way we should be having a playoff that goes on for two months. Um, it, it's it's not a good look because it's going into the middle of June and now there is concerns, you know, you know, with the whole. Um, again, there's a lot of NLL guys that are in the PLL as well, so there's concerns. Like Buffalo's a big one, you know. Like there's a lot of concerns, but in any case, it is what it is. Um, Playoff race right now. I believe I have the. Uh, I believe I have the standings here somewhere. I forgot where. I should have them. But I don't know where. But oh, I'll tell. I'll tell you. I'll tell you something that was pretty good. Um, Dane. Dan Dawson, not Dane. Well, Dane Smith leads the league in assists, but Dan Dawson has the most assists all time in LL history, which is pretty cool. Um, I think, in my personal opinion. But then, you know, Jeff T, he's got to be the rookie of the year at this point. Dude's been absolutely amazing. Uh, if you watched Buffalo, New York yesterday, insanity. Like, I, I, I'm i sitting here completely perplexed that New York was working Buffalo for most of this game until Buffalo decided to come back, you know, finally and try and, you know, make it a game late. And, I mean, I'm sitting here, you know, like, it's crazy, crazy right now. Crazy stuff. You know, Panther City's doing good, but the playoff race is not done. Most teams have about two to three games left. Um, Toronto, Buffalo, and Colorado and San Diego have all clinched spots. Um, and again, all four of these teams are very good teams, I'll tell you right now. Of course, you know, you got Halifax, Georgia, Philadelphia, and Albany um, waiting in the wings. Uh, and, you know, two of the East spots are locked up. There's two more that need to be locked up. And then, you know, the wild card, it's looking more like an East team will get it. You know, it's looking more like it'll be either the Wings or Albany that will get it. But, you know, the the three West teams, you know, there's still time for my Panther City Lacrosse Club. They, they, they did have a five-game winning streak snapped. You know, but they are playing very, very well lately. I'm ex I'm very happy for this team because I did not expect, you know, this team to be playing the way they're playing. But, I mean, they're playing some good lacrosse right now, you know. So, ever, because there's also Calgary. Well, Calgary should be close to locking up that third West um, playoff spot, if, if possible, because they won four straight. Um, again, you know, a lot of teams are on the hunt for that final spot in that, that wild card spot in the NLL um, playoffs. And, uh, I, again, I don't think Panther City is going to get it. I don't think Vancouver is going to get it. They have two games left. Saskatchewan, they have three games left. They're 5-10. and ten. I don't think they're getting it. Um, even though New York had a huge victory yesterday, they have the slimmest of chances. I don't think they're getting it. Um, but Philadelphia, I think they're in a good, good position. Georgia's in a good position. And Albany is in a good position. So I imagine, you know, you know that, that out of out out of out of, the, out of some of these teams here, you know, in Halifax too, I think you know a lot the the. the it's gonna be it's gonna be a tight race in the final three weeks or so of the season. So you know when it, when it, when it comes when it pertains to the NLL, I'll come back in like the first weekend of May. It'll be like a Monday or something like that in May, and I'll come back to you with you know the playoffs. I'll preview the playoffs for the NLL and everything like that. So we're gonna get all that situated. Okay, so. Oh, there's there's a lot with the NLL right now. A lot, 
has happened as we're 19 weeks deep into the 22 week season. In the college game, again, you know, touched on women's lacrosse earlier. In the college game, it has been Maryland and everybody else. Maryland, they are on another level. Like they have so many guys that can make a that can that can make something happen. Like they just whipped up on Rutgers. As as you know, I'm recording. They just whipped up on Rutgers. I don't think I, I don't I don't think there's anybody stopping them because I mean they beat Virginia. You beat Rutgers, and you know they got Ohio State soon. I think that's like next weekend, and it's just like, what can anybody stop them? And I personally don't think they. I don't think anybody can. I really don't think anybody can. I thought you know Rutgers and Virginia would be you know two of the teams that could you know stand up to Maryland, but Virginia lost the Richmond and Rutgers just got worked just like that. You know, so I, I don't know. I don't know, man. And then you got the rest of the ACC. Um, speaking of Virginia, you got the rest of the ACC. Again, the Kavanaugh brothers for Notre Dame, they are on another level themselves, especially Pat Kavanaugh. You know, that's a, that's a uh, those Kavanaugh brothers, they have some good players right there. Notre Dame is a pretty good team, I'll tell you that much. Duke is very much on the bubble. Like, uh, they lost to Notre Dame by one yesterday, I think. And. Despite the fact that Syracuse's Tucker Dorjbich, you know, I hope I said that name correctly, he had the goal of the year against Duke. I watched that game. I remember watching that game, and my goodness, I was I had to replay that goal like seventy times because I mean, I I I was I was so shocked because he it like went through the goalie's uh, legs. It was just like it it felt like you know a shadow just went through you. It felt like a ghost just went through you, cause it, again, it was just nasty, a nasty go. Uh, you know, I thought that you know, I thought that Syracuse game against Duke saved their season for about five seconds, cause they lost to Notre Dame. They got whipped up by Notre Dame, but then they lost to Albany or Albany or Albany. I, I always get those two names mixed up. You know, I always get this, the name mixed up, and it's just it's just not favorable for Syracuse to rest away. Again, you got Notre Dame, you got Virginia, you got North Carolina, you got Cornell, and a, and a lot of people are saying like maybe Syracuse could go two and two, and you know, put up a good showing in the AC. Well, there is no ACC tournament. They can put up a good show. They could put up a good showing. Uh. In these two get in these four games that they have left to go, but again, I, I don't I don't think that's happening. I don't think Syracuse is going anywhere. Duke is another team I don't think is going anywhere either. I think it'll be just you know Virginia, North Carolina, and, and Notre Dame. I'm kind of iffy on North Carolina too, you know, despite the fact that they have Gray, Chris Gray, um, who's been a who's like getting real real close to passing that points record of Lyle Thompson's. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. It, 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 you, you know, we go back to the Big Ten real quick. Let's talk about the Big Ten because I mean, again, you know, Maryland on another level. Rutgers is, you know, they're they're getting there, but they obviously, again, they couldn't catch up to Maryland at all. Like they got whipped. Ohio State's another good team in there, but you know, you know, you got Penn State who beat Michigan, and I think, you know, Michigan's kind of a dud. So's Johns Hopkins. They're also a dud to me. Uh, both these teams, I don't think they're going anywhere. You know, they're sitting on the couch, you know, come playoff time. I think these two teams will be sitting on the couch because, I mean, Michigan feasted on cupcakes and got whooped, you know, multiple times, you know. Rather not whooped, I'll say they got they got thoroughly beaten multiple occasions. Like, again, you know, they lost to Penn State, a team that's not very good this year. You know, they only had two wins coming in. Uh Friday night, and they they just couldn't get it. Johns Hopkins has been, you know, it's just so mediocre. Like uh, I'm sitting here, I'm, I was thinking the other day, I was going on a walk the other day, and I was thinking, like, why is this Johns Hopkins team not good? Why is Hopkins not good? And I, I just couldn't figure it out. Like, usually they're a good team, and they're just not this year. There's also Jacksonville. Keep an eye out on Jacksonville out there, you know. A, a, a really good team in their own right. They have two losses, but they're a good team in their own right. 
Um, and then, you know, the Ivy League still kicking it. Like, a lot of projections. I just saw a projection a few hours ago that had five Ivy League teams in. And, man, oh, man. Um, Harvard, Yale, I know I'm watching that. Um, I thought about Cornell, Syracuse. But, again, Syracuse is not good. So, I decided I'm going to ask trying to watch that. So, you know, it is what it is. And then, you know, um, realignment. Let's, let's get to realignment. You know, again, they're... You know, there's a lot of things aside aside from the fact that we'll, I'll touch on this first. Um, we got a second playing game this year because there's ten conferences. You know, the or rather there's ten conferences that can play for a uh, conference championship. The ACC can't because you know, they don't have six teams. But you know, there's going to be a second men's playing game to keep the field at eight AQs and eight eight lar- at largest, so the lowest four automatic qualifiers will be playing in the two playing games and I don't know if I don't know if they're gonna put the playing games on TV or anything like that because I know they put them like a couple days before the actual tournament begins but it is what it is um, but anyway realignment realignment um, the 810 they should be announcing that they are adding lacrosse as a league anytime now with Richmond St. Joe's UMass St. Bonnie's and the potential affiliate members are Hobart, Fairfield, and High Point. Um, I know there's some UMass fans that are kind of not about, you know, wanting to be in a league, in a 810 league for lacrosse, but it is what it is. You might have to just accept that, guys. I think it might happen, you know, real soon, but they need to hurry up and announce it because, I mean, I'm sitting here like, where, when, when are these announcements going to come? Uh, we do know that the Ace Sun, they have added multiple teams. You know, remember, Lindenwood is new to D1. Um, you know, they are joining the OBC in all other sports, but in the Ace Sun, you know, since the OBC doesn't have lacrosse, the Ace Sun's added them, Jacksonville, and Mercer for 2023. The, the MAC, you know, with two A's, they've added VMI to keep them at six. And then Bryant, they moved on over to the America East. And so that will mean that, you know, America, you know, the America East will have seven teams going forward. And there's also the potential that they could get um, Quinnipiac. I hope I said that correctly because I always get I always get names of stuff wrong. So um, Quinnipiac, I hope they, you know, if they're if they're joining the AEC. You know, that, that'd be that'd be cool. You know, that'll give them a solid eight. Um, the Northeast Conference they added um, Stonehill. They've added Stonehill from D two. That's another D two school because of realignment because Bryant moved to the America East, and you know for a, and that that's more impactful for all sports than anything else. But Stonehill does have a lacrosse program, so we will have a new. We will have multiple new D1 members in college lacrosse, which is which is saying a lot because I mean you know there's not a lot there's only like 80 less than 80 um, D1 men's lacrosse programs you know not like you know the club game or anything like that but I'm talking about full D1 you know programs so. Um, they're also looking at New Haven. That's another school that offers lacrosse and I believe other sports as well. And, you know, remember, Hartford, they're an independent, but they're moving down to D3. You know, if they're going to be an independent come next season. They'll be moving on to D3, you know, as a result of that study that they did quite some time back. So, you know, all thanks to, you know, the realignment guys like Matt Brown, you know, for getting all this done and you know other lacrosse guys you know that cover the sport way better than I do you know getting it done and getting it getting it made because I mean the, the, again this type of this type of thing you know this realignment has really it has affected every facet of the game you know not just not not just uh not just college football or basketball or hockey or whatever, but lacrosse as well. Everything is getting affected. So, yeah. So in any case, um, 
I'll be coming back with the college lacrosse championship preview in the second week of May, around my birthday. So, you know, we'll be back the second weekend of May talking about, you know, college lacrosse and the championship and everything like that and getting all that situated. So, you know, I'm trying to, you know, get things together because we got a long spring. The spring is still moving along. The showers are going and the flowers will be growing soon so you know, a lot of time with three weeks left to go on the season a lot of time for a lot of these teams to you know get you know themselves in the playoff position in both the college game and the NLL and if you haven't watched some lacrosse already I encourage you to do so uh, so with that being said I'll see you all May 2nd around May 2nd and May 9th to talk playoffs for both, you know, the NLL and College Cross. Until then, I'll see you all later with the NBA wrap-up. Take care. See you soon.